So I'm new to the Omnipod 5. Uh, I'm actually new to type 1. I've only been diagnosed since uh, January of 2022. Um, and I wanted to give my initial impressions about that system, where I came from in terms of what I was doing to manage before, and also just some things that, that I've learned that may be helpful if you're not aware of them. So uh, just to start with, like I said, I was diagnosed in January of 2022. Uh, Four years before that, I had been told I had type 2 diabetes and I was managing with oral medications, exercise, really good diet, all that kind of stuff. Eventually, I got the uh, antibody test, the C-peptide tests, and unfortunately told me that, no, I actually had type 1. Uh, at that point, I started on Traceba. I was doing MDI, so I, started, I was on Traceba and I was on Humalog and I had the InPen, which was kind of helping me manage my dosing and, and timing and all that kind of stuff. And so at the time of diagnosis, I was my A1C was horrible. It was like 11.2. Within three months or so, I got down to 6.2, and I really knew what I was doing. Um, with that said, I had kind of let diabetes dominate my life, and I was avoiding socializing, uh, avoiding eating anything outside of like the exact same meals every single day, exercising like crazy, and kind of living a weird life that was revolving around diabetes. Um, and that's kind of one of the reasons that I wanted to switch from MDI to um, a pump, or at least try a pump in the first place. Some of the things that I noticed with MDI just before I get into the pump was that I started to know, I, I figured out exactly what my basal rate was. I had that dialed in really well. And I knew exactly what my carb ratios were or how many units of insulin I needed for specific meals or as corrections and all that kind of stuff. So I had really good control. Um, I didn't really have lows, but that's also because I'm kind of a lunatic and I would check my Dexcom every five minutes and if something was trending in that direction, I would treat it uh, aggressively so that I didn't actually have a low. I guess what I'm trying to say is if I wasn't treating it or if I wasn't being super duper proactive, I would have had quite a few lows. I had to also really kind of actually reduce the amount of exercise that I did, especially within you know a three to or two to three hour window after taking that insulin. and so. There was a variety of restrictions that I felt on my life as a result of MDI. Um, so it was kind of pro and con there. So really good control, but also very structured, very rigid life with a little bit of a fear of insulin. And so I'm on my third pod of the Omnipod 5 now. So first of all, I'd like to say I'm really appreciative that I even had the opportunity to try it because I know insurance is crazy and all that kind of stuff. But I work for a hospital system. I was lucky to have good insurance. And so I'm trying the Omnipod 5. The, my third pod in about a week and a half, there's things that I love and there's things that I hate. Um, with that said, it's only my third pod. I, I don't want to make it seem like any of my opinions are final. They're all going to change and I'm sure they're all going to evolve because I believe that that's how the Omnipod 5, Omnipod 5 works in the first place. Um, but just to kind of say where I'm at and highlight some of the things that I like and don't like. So things that I like. Um, first, I absolutely love just using a PDM to give myself insulin. Um, as I mentioned, I was really controlled with MDI, but I was giving myself up to like, you know, between 10 and 15 shots a day, which was getting a little bit crazy and it's time consuming. There's all sorts of stresses associated with that. Like, do I have needles that I insert the right way, that I rotate sites? If I'm out, where am I going to go give myself a shot? All that kind of stuff. Um, so just being able to pull out the phone and give myself insulin is, <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. So I, I love that. That's a huge, huge benefit. The other thing that I really love is that outside of one situation so far, I've had nothing even approaching a low, nothing I've had to treat except for one instance. Um, and so for me, that's great because I'm, you know, I'm really into health and fitness. I don't want to just eat glucose tabs or have full flavored Gatorades or other simple sugars just to treat lows. Um, that's counterproductive to everything I do and I, I hate it. It always seems to happen right after I brush my teeth too, so that drives me nuts. Um, so with the Omnipod 5, that hasn't happened except for once. And so that's also a massive, massive change. I'm already feeling uh, less fear of insulin, which is, you can't underestimate how important that is. So that's been, that's been absolutely huge. So the, the, just to recap, the things that I love is the control using the PDM. So giving myself insulin instead of having to do a shot, but using the PDM. And then way less lows, way less concern about lows. Um, so with that, the things that I really, really dislike so far are the, really the control that I have over my blood sugar. Um, so my time and range on MDI was 99%. My 
my average blood glucose was about 125. And within these first three or these first three pods, about a week and a half on the Omni, Omni Pod 5, my time in range has gone down to I think about 84 to 85%. My average uh, glucose is 150 to 170. And so for me, that's totally unacceptable. It drives me crazy. I can't stop looking at the numbers and being frustrated. And it's really, it's really getting to me. Um, with that said, again, I think it's all going to change as the algorithm gets to know me. Um, and I fully expect that that's the case. And I'll, I'll post updates as that happens. But just for anybody who may be experiencing the same thing, I, I think I kind of understand what is going on. And so first thing to be aware of is that I'm only in automated mode right now. So the Omnipod 5 has an automated mode and a manual mode. Manual mode, you can put in your basal rate, you can just kind of work it like a like a pump. You have a, well, like a traditional pump. It's not gonna use the algorithm. It's not gonna, I, think, I don't think it's gonna make adjustments based on your CGM. So I haven't used that yet. What they tell you when you first start is to use automated so that the algorithm learns your body and learns what your insulin needs are. And so it kind of, the first few weeks, it sounds like for everybody, it's a little bit of a learning process and it's a little bit painful. So the problem is in automated mode, there's really no basal rate. Um, you'll see if you look in the history of your, your app, it's gonna show you the automated insulin doses that it's giving you, which is essentially your basal insulin. Uh, it starts off at these really, really tiny dosages, like a 0.05 unit um, dose, potentially every five minutes, but usually less frequently than that. And that's your basal insulin. The problem is when you take a, a bolus dose, it's gonna automatically stop that basal insulin delivery. And so essentially my understanding is that when you take a, ba a bolus dose, that dose is essentially covering the food that you would have within that window of time for the insulin to work. So two to four hours, but it's also covering what would have been needed for basal. And so let's say I take two units of a bolus injection or a bolus dose, not injection. Um, that two units is gonna cover the amount of carbs that I've entered into the system. And then it's also gonna have to cover for any uh, basal needs that I would have had during that peak window. So for me, it's like, I think I have a two and a half um, insulin duration action time. So what happens for me, long story short, is like, let's say I start at 120 and I take two units for my lunch. With MDI, it would have typically gone up to about 140 or 150 and then come right back down to 120 and just stayed there. With the Omnipod 5, what I'm seeing is I'll go from 120 to 180 or 190 and I'll just stay there for three or four hours until I give a manual correction. The, if I did nothing, if I didn't give any manual corrections, I would see the system giving me more frequent doses of that basal um, in delivery with like, after two or three hours. So it would start giving me 0.05 units every five minutes. But that's such a tiny dose that it's really not even gonna budge it. And then usually it's gonna be so long that I'll be hungry again and then it's time to eat. So the net result is you end up just really high all day long, which is it's really freaking frustrating. Um, What's been told to me and what I've already seen is that with each pod change, the algorithm informs uh, the new pod, kind of what your needs were with the previous one, and that's where it starts to get better. And so you'll start to see those automated um, basal doses going up. So for example, today I saw ones that were 0.05 move up to 0.1. And so in theory, that's gonna start to keep my blood sugar at a better range, and it's gonna bring it back down to a better range quicker. Um, I still don't quite understand how the system is gonna handle this whole suspension of basal insulin when I take a bolus dose. So I, I feel like, actually, I just don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen there. Maybe you just have to keep taking a larger bolus dose, or maybe eventually the system will learn that you keep going to an out of range number and it's gonna just not stop the basal insulin delivery. But that part drives me crazy. In my opinion, it would be far easier, even in automated mode, to be able to give it uh, a basal rate and have the system make adjustments from there. So for example, I wish that I could set up the, the automated system to say, I want eight units of basal insulin per day, plus whatever I need for my bolus doses and for corrections. And then if the system could just see that it predicted I was gonna go low based on uh, a trend in the CGM, then cut it off. Don't cut it off preemptively. And so I'm not sure why it works like that. Like that, that part drives me crazy. But I do think it will keep getting better. 
um, as those basal doses go up. And so if that part gets better, I think the system is absolutely incredible. I think right now, it depends on what your goals are. And, you know, I think it's, it's a lot less mental burden having the system do a lot of these things for me, like the way it gives me insulin um, through the PDM, the way I don't have to worry so much about lows, that's incredibly valuable. But the actual average blood glucose, the responses to meals and my overnights, which have been crappy lately too, like in the 170s or so, that stuff is not good if you're somebody that's really accustomed to very tight control and maybe a little bit of a control freak like, like I am. So I think it's gonna keep getting better, but those are my initial impressions and I'll post more videos as I spend more time with it and as I, I uh, put on subsequent pods and it gets a little bit more aggressive. So that's where I'm at.